So, dear students, cheer greetings once again. I hope you had your break and the break gone off. Quite good. So, let's switch to the second part of our fifth lecture. We have decided to give it a specific topic as we are going to work with the mind system machinery, the first mind system machinery once again. As far as you remember, we are going to deepen our knowledge according to that notion. Moreover, we are going to deepen our knowledge according to the notion of the coordinate system wherever a person lives, according to the absolute rule of the God natural hierarchy, right? And one more thing that is quite important that we are going to start a special studies concerning the instrumental set. And right now we are going to learn the very first working procedure, training complex of a special system that exists in the Slavic applied science psychosomological complexes, which name is Rastro. So the first working procedure, the first exercise out of that complex, which is called Rastro, is the truth and the falsehood. So the truth and the false. We are going to learn a new instrument, which may give you quite decent and absolute understanding of what you are dealing, dealing with in your life whether you are dealing with your truth and correct information or you are dealing with wrong, false and incorrect information. That's what we are going to study during our second part of our fifth lecture. And right now the word goes to, to the grand constructor of a new brand Swift Pro 613 to the chief of the Austrian Scientific Research Institution. Please, may you speak? Значит, в самом начале этой лекции вам нужно сосредоточить свое внимание, усвоить один принцип. Да? То есть то, что мы говорили в прошлой лекции, приводит к нас к выводу, что то, что вы знаете, освобождает вас от зависимости от этого. То есть вы освобождаетесь, когда вы узнаете, приобретаете знания, вы не можете больше зависеть от того, что вы, то есть зависимость возникает из незнания и неспособности человека, да, то есть поэтому выглядит это следующим способом, да, то, то что вы знаете, вы от этого не можете быть зависимым. So, from the very beginning of our lecture, actually we have faced a certain principle, which I am going to interpret once again. So, as for the principle itself, we came up to the conclusion that there is certain information that a person is aware of in his life. And the main principle sounds as follows. The person cannot fall in dependence on the things he is aware of. That is, if you know something you cannot fall dependent on it, but you can use it. Whilst, on the other hand, if you do not know something, there is nothing to be applied according to this or that situation. That's why you fall dependent from that misknowledge. And this is one of the reasons why people fall in quite bad situations, like in miserable situations, in situations where they face misfortunes. And that's what we are talking about. We are talking about the principle which tells you about dependence and about the way how to overcome that dependence. That is, you have to know the initial knowledge or that very knowledge that to be, that is to become applicable in the situation you are dealing with. Mm -hmm. so, uh, начать эту лекцию с продолжения, как продолжение предыдущей лекции с некого инструмента, чтобы мы сразу с вами условились, что такое правильное, что такое неправильное, что такое истинное, то есть как выглядит вот этот вот то, что нам необходимо, вот то, каким критерием отличает то, что нам необходимо заливать вот этот механизм памяти, то есть 
как выглядит истина. Okay. So, the beginning of the second part of our today's lecture would be like, just like quite logical continuation of the previous part, okay? So, from now on we would like to start the studies of a very special instrument. This instrument is called the truth and falsehood instrument. This, that is, from now on we are going to know how to apply a special tool or an instrument saying us and telling us by specific criteria whether that situation or the information or something to which we are applying this very instrument are correct and true or whether they are not so they are incorrect and false and right now we are going to study that very instrument the truth and the falsehood Instrument. Как я и обещал, мы начинаем тренировать память. Механизмы памяти. Uh, right time, time to to I mean the memory system machinery, how it works. So in order to train it, we should start with these instrument studies. Да, то есть и тренировать, так сказать, вот эти машины памяти, да, то есть, которые вы только что им объяснили, необходимо не от случая к случаю, а постоянно в процессе жизни и деятельности как бы человека. So, as for the memory system machinery, as for the setting, you have you have to really work hard in order to train and to receive the results. And by the way, one more important idea for you to know is that this memory system is not to be trained occasionally, like one day you train it, the other you do not. No, it should be trained every single day, from the morning till night, from dusk till dawn, every time, because only in this way you are to receive the results you want to. If you are going to train your memory and to work, to research the memory system machinery occasionally, you won't receive the results. And now you are aware of that fact, so please do your best to memorize it. То есть, и вам нужно понимать, что эти машины памяти, да, они не находятся внутри вашего тела. And one more important idea I would claim and put specific attention to is that all these systems, all these machineries are not inside human's body. They are not inside, no. They are outside of him. Outside his body. Everything's outside you. All machineries, all systems, all structures due to which the human system as a total absolute system works are outside your body, your physical body. Внутри вашего тела вообще, кроме биологических органов, ничего больше не существует. Вы должны это четко понять. As for what is hidden inside your physical body, actually, I guess it's quite obvious, and you should know and be aware of that, that there is nothing except for some body organs there. There is nothing inside except for biological content, you know. Everything that is connected with mind, a certain kind of machinery, is outside of it. То есть, э, ваше тело, биология и механика, да, они конечные в этом мире. То есть это конец этого мира. И поэтому не часть этого физического, ну как бы они находятся в этом физическом мире. Как бы. So from now on you ought to know that your body, like your human, the part of your human system, your physical body is just the end. And from the point of view of the mechanical part and the biological part, uh, the body as a part of the human system is the end of the human system. So the human system ends with human body, right? And being a body and being a human are quite different things. Because body is a part of the material world. I mean, the world of physics we live in. And this is the end. This is where it ends. 
all the rest is outside of the body. So this is just the beginning, okay? And we're going to deal with all that stuff that's outside. Вот для того, чтобы тренироваться, то есть тренировать память, нужна система тренировки, тренировки памяти. So it's quite logical and obvious that in order to train the machinery of your memory, a special system and a special methodology is quite necessary in order to achieve decent results. То есть вот таким то есть и в славянской прикладной науке существует первый чемодан инструментов, который называется комплекс. И он называется, у него кодовое название Растуб. У него кодовое название Растуб. So, on the basis of that statement, from now on, I'd like you to know that in the Slavic applied science, there are certain cases, right? Instrumental cases. We were already talking about them. And now, we are going to take the first very case, the case of the instruments, and all together in science, this instrumental case is called a special complex. So it represents by itself a special complex with a toolkit. And as for the Slavic applied science terminology and notions, we gave the code name of that very complex. And the code name is it's just the code. Это аббревиатура, это кодовое название. Его требуется читать по-английски точно так же, как по-русски. It's an abbreviation. It's an abbreviation. It's a code name of the complex we are talking about. And in English it is read in the same way it is spelled. I mean rostrum, okay? So that is the English, that is both the English language term and the Russian term, Rostro. Okay? So please memorize that. It is pronounced in the same way I am pronouncing it. I mean Rostro, okay? It is spelled and pronounced in the same way. As for the Rostrop complex, it's a very, very ancient instrumental case. As for the period of time of its existence, we can prove it may count approximately 18,000 years old. That's that period of time that we can prove right now according to the orthodox scientific point of view. That's what is proved. Uh, and этого комплекса для того, чтобы вы могли тренировать машины, вот механизмы памяти. So, once again, as for the Rostrop complex itself, it consists of special procedures, of special working procedures, and there are two variants in which the Rostrop complex could be studied and applied throughout your life. One way, it's just a usual civil way. Let's call it the civil way. And as for the civil approach or civil way, the Rostrop complex calls 12 working procedures. I mean, there are 12 points, 12 exercises, special training exercises, in a civil approach according to the Rostrop complex. But let's take another approach, one more. It's the warrior approach for the militaries, actually, if we are taking uh, contemporary terms. As for the warrior approach, there are 16 working procedures or 16 training, uh, 16 exercises for training. During our course, 
As for the academy, we are going to learn both civil set of working procedures, I mean 12 of them, and the warrior set of working procedures, that is 16. We are going to study all of them. То есть мы поэтапно с вами будем осваивать РПТК за РПТК, то есть упражнения, тренировочный комплекс за тренировочным комплексом. И это будет первый кейс, вот этот первый чемодан, который мы должны освоить, то есть мы должны научиться управлять механизмами своей памяти. So, as for the studies itself, we are going to study everything quite gradually. I mean stage by stage, inch by inch. And as for the Slavic Applied Science Complex Rostrum, actually this is that very first instrumental case which we are to transfer to you and which you are to get transmitted of, okay? So, we are going to study all that complex, we are going to study all working procedures, they combine all together these very complex and by the end of the year you are going to be aware of all of them, of how them, of the way how to apply them of the way how to implement the tasks on the basis of those working procedures and you are going to become aware of how to train your mind and your memory system how to train your memory machinery system according to this instrumental set Что еще воину нужно знать об этом комплексе? Okay, let's talk about what it is necessary for any warrior to know about that very complex. So just on the hand, on the one hand, as for this instrumental kilt, uh, actually this that very language which the whole world speaks to you. The world uses its specific language, you know, not Russian, not English. It has his own language. And the name of this language is this instrumental complex. The notions of this instrumental complex. С другой стороны, из этого комплекса все его упражнения превратились в оружие вооружения. Все оружие вооружения это вот затвердевшие упражнения этого как бы, комплекса, ставшие твердыми упражнения этого комплекса. On the other hand, as for the Rostrum complex itself, it's a very vivid idea and it's proven historical fact actually that all armoring, all warrior weapons have a special origin because they have come out of complex Rostrum. Throughout the centuries, some working procedures, they just became solid. And then, during special, I don't know, time, they have become the armor. So all working procedures of this very complex, right now, as for today, represent themselves, the armor in its solid variant. Да, и вот сегодня мы будем изучать ту субстанцию, ту субстанцию, из которой возник щит. Вот у воинов возник щит. Вот весь, то есть мы сегодня будем изучать природу щита, который возник как оружие, как бы протект, ну, как бы оружие на земле. Вот все, все щиты в мире возникли из этой субстанции. РПТК-1 Комплекс Растуб является природой, природой, причиной, которая снизошла на физику и затвердела, стала твердой, стала твердой. И из этого появился вот этот щит. So as for oh, now, as for now, I know, we are going to study that specific substance, non-material substance, that comes out and represents by itself the first working procedure of the Slavic applied complex called Rostro, okay? 
And by itself, this first working procedure represents non-material substance that throughout the centuries came up to the material supplying and material and attended the material way of a shield. So from now on we are going to study the nature of warrior's shield, of any warrior shields they just you can come up to and create an idea of a shield. You know, in ancient times people used to try shields in order to defend themselves. Even right now some policemen use these shields. And we are going to study the nature and understand the total, the absolute nature and the way and the source from which this shield appeared, it came up to our material world. Что нам этот инструмент будет э, позволять делать? So right now let's talk about what we will become able of doing due to this knowledge. What can we do with a shield principle and shield knowledge? Ну, во-первых, отличать, э, что истина, а что ложно. With this shield knowledge, according to this working procedure of this complex, we are going to learn how to interdict, how to know and to become strongly aware of the fact whether you're dealing with false information or you're dealing with true information. Второе. Каким критериям должен отвечать позволит понять, каким эталонным критерием должен отличать технический элемент. Отличать технический элемент. Secondly, the shield... Любой. Любой технический элемент, который мы используем. The shield element, as for this working procedure, helps any warrior, and it's going to help you, of course, if you're going to apply it, how to switch to the ethylonic stage of warrior craft. I mean, um, how to use specific ethylonic technique and specific ethylonical methods in the, any combat system. And you will be able to do that by applying the knowledge of the shield principle according to the working procedure number one. Uh. Это позволит нам защититься от заблуждений, от навязываемых нам заблуждений. So, what is the way this shield principle is going to help us with? First of all, this shield will protect us from all delusions all people try to involve us in. They try to make us get involved into their world of full of delusions, right? And with this shield, we are going to learn uh, how to prevent such situations and how to overcome and dismiss all those delusions. И это позволит нам uh, выучить uh, оборону, то есть механизмы, которые uh, необходимо применять в обороне, то есть как защищаться во всех ситуациях, которые в жизни могут возникнуть, механизмы обороны. Uh, на самую большую глубину, то есть как бы познать его абсолютно, ну, то есть, как бы, взять самый большой объем информации, я знаю, то есть полностью э, осознать и научиться применять оборонительные действия, то есть как бы, научиться обороняться, на, в, в, достичь, достичь высшего класса в обороне. To learn everything about the defendant's machinery according to the appliance of this very working procedure. Number one, that is, a person who knows what the shield is, a person who knows how to use a shield principle in his life, a person who knows how to protect himself on the basis of that machinery of shield working procedure. He knows everything about dependence machinery as a matter of fact. That is, 
you know, certain notion can be explained and can be taught up to certain degrees, right? And you have come here to achieve the best degree, right? To get the best class, to be well prepared and extraordinarily prepared. So, in case you want to become aware of defendant's machinery system extraordinarily, you have to know this shield principle. Для того, чтобы вам объяснить вот это вот первое ПТК, mm -hmm. да, мне необходимо будет использовать некий инструмент. И я вас, вас должен буду познакомить не только с самим ПТК, но еще и вот с этим инструментом. Потому что мы этот инструмент будем использовать что? Постоянно в Академии на протяжении всего периода нашего обучения. So, moving on. In order to let you know of the shield principle and all this working procedure, as a matter of fact, we have to teach you of a special instrument. Actually, it's like some kind of acquaintance, it's new information for you. Because in order to know how to apply this working procedure, and in order to know how to interdict the truth out of the false, you should use certain special instrument. And we are going to learn that very instrument on the basis of which the first working procedure of this complex works. То есть, этот инструмент называется круг Мальцева. The name of this instrument is Мальцев Circle. Почему он так называется? So let's talk a little bit about the reasons this instrument has such a name. Потому что этот инструмент в этот раз, вот сейчас, то есть я не знаю, как сказать. То есть, понимаете, дело в том, что все инструменты существуют вне того, вне того, вне названий, как бы кто его осознал первый в настоящий момент времени на Земле. То есть знание оно ничем. Ну, как бы, понимаете? То есть это, это, это то же самое, что сказать, что моим именем названа Луна, потому что я ее открыл, понимаете? Ну что, без меня Луны не существовало? Да, то есть как бы она и так существует. Просто я первый рассказал, как ну, осознал этот инструмент, и первый, кто его дал людям. Ну, как бы, вот опять же, в этом веке, ну, в этом поколении, что вероятно, вероятно, до меня многократно уже использовался этот инструмент многократно использовался этот инструмент и был утерян ну, в глубине веков понятно да то есть вот я хочу чтобы этот принцип тоже усвоили что знания не ничьи то есть вопрос вы имеете доступ к этим знаниям или не имеете понятно? поэтому круг называется Мальцева только потому что я, я первый в мире на сегодняшний день кто осознал наличие этого инструмента и дал его людям а сейчас уже и на английском языке so... да вот попытайся Ира объяснить вот, вот, вот это то что я сказал Коротко и понятно на их нем. Actually, языке. this is rather, I don't know, like peculiar Russian realia, which I'm 100% confident you're not aware of. But still, let's talk a little bit about the name of the instrument. The name of the instrument is Mitsev Circle. I mean, the circle of Mitsev, of that very Mitsev who talks to you right now. But, of course, you should understand that this instrument doesn't belong to him. It's not like his own idea or his own technology. He's not the inventor. No, this instrument has always been in this life. But Alev Maksev is the first person in this century who came up to the cognition of the existence of this very instrument. That's why by being the first person who came up to the idea how this instrument works, not only that this instrument exists, but also how it works and what its system is structured like and what is the machinery of the system, what are the principles of this instrument. And as he is the first person who right now, I don't know, just 
reopened once again, reinvented, restored this instrument, he gave his own name up to this circle. But one more, one more very important thing you have to be aware of is that actually as a knowledge, as a knowledge and as a piece of a knowledge, the knowledge by itself doesn't belong to anybody. The matter of fact is that either you are aware of that knowledge or you are not. Either you have access to that knowledge or you do not have the access. And this is right that very moment when you're getting that access because Mr. Mindset just reopens this knowledge as for you and he gives it to you. Previously he was giving this information and talking about this instrument to the Russian auditory and to the Slavic auditory and, and audience and right now it's uh, your time has come I guess our foreigner students for knowing and for getting acquainted with the existence of this very instrument. Мы воспользуемся этим инструментом для объяснения РПТК-1. И вы увидите, как появился щит на Земле. So we are going to use this instrument in order to get clear explanation of the shield principles on the basis of which the first working procedure acts. And right now you are going to understand the nature that bore all shields throughout the whole world. We are going to do that on the basis of the instrument which is called the circle of Mindsef or Mindsef's circle. Этот круг будет отличаться для людей, которые говорят на английском, от круга, которые говорят на русском. То есть русским я так не объясняю. Если вы хотите познать глубину этого инструмента, вам придется учить русский. Okay. So, as a matter of fact, uh, this instrument has its own setting and it has its own machinery. But the English version of explanation of how this instrument works differs just up to quite high extent from the version the explanation is given to the Russian audience. And in case you want to uh, cognite the whole system that is connected with this instrument, I mean the Miles of Circle, Actually, if you want to deepen your knowledge up to the deepest levels, our dear foreigners, you will be obliged in that case to study Russian language. Just in case you want to understand the total Russian version of explanation of how that instrument is being ruled by. But that matters just the explanation part. That да. matters just the explanation part. По-другому человеку, который говорит на английском, объяснить нельзя. It's a matter of fact that only one explanation that we are going to give you and provide you with could be given to the English-speaking audience as for the explanation of the instrument Miles of Circle. Only one way to make it clear for you. So, right now, let's make a sketch and put on the board the drawing of the instrument while it's a circle, right? Значит, центр это состояние координации. Okay, let's have a look over this system. Here in the center I've put a dot. Why? Because this central part is the coordinate part. So everything is coordinated in this very part. It's 
the statue of balance. So everything is balanced and coordinated in this part where the dot is put. Okay? So, another image to make it clear for you. It's the center of the shield. Just imagine you're holding a shield and there is a central point, a central dot. And this is the center of coordination, okay? Четыре точки опоры. Один, два, три, четыре. Четыре точки опоры. Apart from coordinate system, there are four pivots. Pivot number one, pivot number two, pivot number three, and pivot number four. You see? Шесть затворов. Один, два, два, четыре, четыре. Три, три, один, один, четыре и три, два. There are four, I mean, there are six, I'm sorry, there are six dynamic motional boards. The first is like this, one, two, dynamic motional board. Then, two, four, dynamic motional board. Then, another part of this massive circle is four, three, Dynamic motion board and three one dynamic motion board. So all together they make the four, right? Four of them. But we have one four dynamic motion board. Okay. So this is the fifth one and three two dynamic motion board. So this is the sixth one. Once again we have six dynamic motion boards. This one, this one, this one, this one, and from the top to the bottom, and this one. From the right. In the third wheel, in the third wheel, in the third point of support, the third one, yes, there will be good. Okay. As for the third pivot, as for the third pivot, here we are going to speak of welfare. I mean, all good and good, all the welfare, not just like material, money, and so on, it's just the total, absolute notion of welfare, okay? So when we speak about the welfare, we mean that welfare at the third part, at the third pilot, represents the third notion in this circle, okay? Okay. В первой точке опоры, копейки, у нас будет многоприменимость. About certain situations, about all variety of situations in which this or that fact, which we are dealing with on the basis of this instrument, could be applied for. В двойке у нас будет работает безотказно. Ну сколько раз бы вы это не применяли, это всегда работает. As for the second pivot. Here, this criteria could be interpreted in such a way. Just always works. By saying and claiming the word always, I mean always, in any single situation, everywhere. And working in any single situation, it brings the result in every single situation. There are no exclusions from that rule. И в четвертой точке опоры будет как бы сочетание двух вещей. С одной стороны, это будет доказано, ну то есть как бы не вызывает сомнения в силу того, что многократно проверено. А с другой стороны, не просто проверено, а проверено на собственной практике, то есть в процессе собственной практики. As for the fourth pilot, as for the fourth criteria. 
we are going to talk about the combinations of a, a combination of two notions. Okay, the first notion is telling us that this thing is proven and checked. Yes, this is the first. And moreover, the second notion is telling us that this is checked and proven because it was proven on your own practice or just on your own. Okay? То есть uh, сочетание этих четырех признаков дают как uh, состояние баланса истины. So that... Точки к балансу дают истину. So as for the combination of those four things, as for the combination of those four criteria, in a balancing variant, we could talk, and we are to claim that we are dealing with the truth. So, if after the application of the instrument, you face the situation where all four criteria are accepted, then you can make the conclusion that you are dealing with truth. If not, if one of the criteria contradicts this instrument, you make the conclusion that's not truth, but that's false. That's what this instrument talks about. Здесь нет факультативных признаков, все четыре признака важны. All these four criteria are extraordinarily important and they are equal. There are no something like optional or facultative, facultative, I mean, sorry. Uh, there are no such descriptions and features, no. All four criteria are equal. And you should check all four criteria. And this is the understanding of truth. На физическом плане, вот здесь, на физике, затвердел, снизойдя сверху к нам, от Бога к нам, снизойдя сверху, и в, в определенной стадии деградации человечества превратился в щит. So, as a matter of fact, by providing the truth, balance and coordinate system, this subject this substance, it's quite non-material, right? That came throughout the centuries and being misinterpreted throughout the centuries according to the degradation levels of human capabilities. Right now, it switched from non-material subject which we right now are talking about. It descended to the material world in the form and in the shape of shield. I mean, earlier, there wasn't any shield at all. There was this knowledge and this substance. But throughout the centuries, throughout the degradation levels, it changed its features, became solid, and switched into the shield. That's why right now the shield has such a shape. And this is its historical way and explanation of from where we received such an invention. Кто этого не понимает, тот никогда познать оборону не сможет. То есть э, не сможет научиться защищаться. Кто вот этого инструмента не знает, то есть это не позволит ему научиться защищаться и защищать других не при каких обстоятельствах. So, one more extraordinarily important thing for you to understand is that such people who do not wish to become aware of this state of things or who just thinks it's too complicated for him, that's why he's not going to make it clear for him. Such person will never achieve success in the sphere of personal safety because this is the only principle that makes it clear for you what 
the defendant's machinery is and how it works. Only that person who knows how to deal with that defendant's machinery on the basis of shield principle and by knowing its historical explanation of its nature is going to higher his level and really understand the way the defendant system operates by itself. То, что я вам здесь объясняю, не имеет никакого отношения к религии. By the way, uh, even though we are talking about certain uh, spiritual things or, I mean, things that could be connected with God, still it has no connection with any religion. It doesn't concern religion at all. We are not talking about religion. То есть я вам объясняю, как вам нужно понимать вещи для того, чтобы постоянно побеждать. This explanation is given to you just to make it clear for you how to win in any occasion, how to win in any situation, because on the basis of such understanding, you will be able to do that at any time. Okay. То есть смысл заключается в том, что Если человек неправильно понимает, как обстоят дела, он всегда что? Допускает ошибку. То есть он всегда принимает неверное решение, делает неверный выбор, ну и так далее, и тому подобное. Всегда допускает ошибку и получает поражение в результате. So the main idea coming up to us is in the fact that actually when a person is not aware of that, when a person gets on their own idea of what the case is all about and he has their own idea what he's really dealing with, on the basis of that wrong idea, he is always to receive misfortune. That's why, firstly, it is of high importance to know what you are dealing with and have the wrong and have the correct understanding about the state of things. If you do not have this correct understanding, you have wrong understanding. And you won't have any opportunity to create with wrong understanding some kind of good decision or make a right choice. You know, it's not like that. Wrong understanding always brings as its consequence the wrong result. Uh, to jest wam как бы поднимемся до уровня кулачного как бы, боя, а это бой как бы мечом и щитом, то есть одно из элементов кулачного боя будут по природе своей проистекать из РПТК-1 как бы комплекса Раструб. Если мы не понимаем природу, мы никогда не сможем отобрать технические элементы, которые соответствуют ну, эталону, чтобы всегда побеждать. Okay. So, as for the principle, it's obviously important and just of an extraordinary importance for you to make it clear. Simply because this principle and this idea helps you first to protect yourself and to protect people who are dear to you. I mean to protect it both physically and according to all levels. It helps you to protect yourself from any delusions that surround you and as a matter of fact this shield the, and the understanding of how the shield machinery works helps you to switch to the ethelonical point of view I mean what kind of ethelonic methods of ethelonic principles movements are to be used when you are dealing with any sort of combat systems by the way, according to the process of our studies, according to our program, 
we are going to study the whole defense machinery, which is based on that shield knowledge, okay? And we are even going to come up to the third level, that is the level of Kulachny, okay? I've given you the words of fisticuffs here to make it more clear for you. And we are going to apply this information just to come up to this level and to learn this level quite good. Because according to this level of preparation, we, mean we need to know how to use ethelonic principles of battle in which you use both a sword and a shield. Теперь нам необходимо ввести систему координат, ввести систему координат, потому что ничего нельзя сделать, если не понимаешь системы координат, да? есть, в которой мы будем действовать для того, чтобы всегда побеждать. Вытирайте все с доски и пишите естественную иерархию творения, пока без обозначений. So, in order to know how, ever, how that stuff operates like, right? first of all, of course, you should know where this things are applicable, how to use them, and what kind of system every single person is dealing with throughout his life. So right now, we are coming to the notion of coordinate system, and the best way to make it clear for you what the coordinate system is, of which parts and elements it consists. We are going to switch to our next instrument. Actually, it's an absolutely important and uh, the instrument of the highest level, right? This is the instrument that represents by itself the rule of natural hierarchy God creation. So we are going to start just from the bottom till the top, right? Мир строится сверху вниз от Бога до вот физического вот этого как бы мира. So how is the world being built like? The world itself is being built from upwards. Till the downwards, I mean, in such way, right? For everything's being built and created, starting with God and ending with material world. So everything starts with God peace, right? And ends with material some kind of material or some kind of material world. So this is the range, the diapason. Там выше, mm -hmm. вот выше той точки, в самой верхней, да, есть другие уровни. Actually, as for the dot uh, that I've put here, just to um, make it clear for you where we start with the God. If we are talking about the levels which go higher, there are some of them. There are lots of levels, actually. But right now we're not going to talk about them. We are going to learn the natural hierarchy God creation rule. Okay? Они есть, но они нам не нужны, потому что мы будем в академии без вот в академии безопасности будем иметь дело только с тем, только с тем, что вы способны как бы осознать как люди вот сейчас как бы на земле. То есть никаких вещей, которые нельзя проверить сразу, ну сходу, да? Я не смогу продемонстрировать некоторые вещи, да, там и так далее. Таких вещей не будет. Мы такие вещи изучать не станем по причине того, что они вам на этой стадии подготовки пока не нужны. Пока. So, as for the, all those levels, we are not going to talk about them right now, and we are not going to study them during our academic program, just due to several quite simple facts. Because first of all, uh, they are quite there is certain difficulty in proving them to make it get proven and checked for you. You cannot check that on your own. You could see the demonstration, but you won't be able of checking that on your own, just like in your skin, right? 
And by the way, all those levels wouldn't be applied so easily for you and actually you do not need them to solve the tasks you are facing right now as a contemporary person. That's why we are not going to switch all our attention towards those uh, levels. But we are going to switch all our attention to the systems, machineries and levels which may help us to implement any task we may face. И мир сверху вниз спускается, спускается на физику определенными ступенями. So, let's talk a bit about the structure of the world. So, as the principle says, the world by itself descends from the top to the bottom randomly. It's like descending movement, right? And by descending, it creates certain levels, like certain step on a, you know, just take an image of a staircase, okay? The staircase consists of several steps. When you start from the top of the staircase and descend that staircase, you're moving across the steps. So here, according to this instrument, we are going to follow those steps. How they look like, how they work, and how to deal with them. И вот этот самый верхний уровень, который мы будем изучать, это уровень замысла. Его изучает славянская наука э, с аббревиатурным названием СНВ 2 ДУ. Okay, let's start with the very first level. Самый верхний уровень, это уровень замысла. It's the level of an absolute idea. Absolute idea of God, okay? And as for the name of the science, there is a special <coughs> branch of science in Slavic applied sciences, okay? As for the branch, we are going to deal with such branch as system of new... <laughs> External motional dynamic system management, I mean, system. So it's quite long, yeah, I know, but do not worry, that's okay, because it's very important and quite complicated. So this is a system of new external emotional dynamic management. This is just one of eight branches that all together comply the Slavic applied science. And this science studies all absolute ideas. I mean the highest level of hierarchy. Второй уровень – это уровень системы координат. Это уровень системы координат вниз, второй уровень – это уровень системы координат. Его изучает славянская как бы, наука с аббревиатурным названием v 2 d Okay, let's step up here on this very level. I'm going to switch the marker, okay? If here we were studying the absolute ideas by descending we are coming up to the coordinate systems so here on this level we deal with coordinate systems with all systems that surround you and another branch of Slavic applied science which object of studies is the coordinate system and all the diversity of coordinate systems? It's the system of external motional dynamic management. So as for the abbreviation code name, the difference is in you. It's like external motional dynamic management science. I'm going to write it here. 
external, motional, dynamic, management, science. Следующий уровень вниз – это уровень силы. So, by descending, coming up to the next level, here we face the level of powers. When we study the power, or the powers that just exist in the whole world, in all worlds, we are talking about this very level, you see? The third one starting with the top. Вот э, этот уровень изучает наука норма, то есть э, да, норма, э, э, наука о ролевом моделировании, то есть вот такая единственная наука, в которой существует э, в аббревиатуре моя фамилия, как бы как человека, который эту науку реставрировал из глубины веков, э, она так называется наука о ролевом моделировании Мальцева, норма. So, as for the powers, mm -hmm. of course, there is a specific branch in Slavic Applied Sciences that has the powers as its own subject of studies. In Russian, the abbreviation for the name of this branch of sciences is Norma. In Latin and in English, you have the same word. But this is not like Norma, it's just the abbreviation. And this is the only abbreviation which in its spelling has the surname of Mr. Maltsev because he is the first person who cognized this science, came up to the understanding of the rules of all the machinery and mechanics of that science and gave us this knowledge. But as for understanding what this branch of science is talking about. I'm going to give another notion of this science. It's like the science of role playing. So what kind of rules are used, how to create rules and so on and so forth, this is the science of role playing, that's normal in Russian, and that science is dedicated to study up to 100% all powers systems. Следующий уровень, на который не сходит мир, это уровень скорости и дистанции. Уровень скорости и дистанции. Вот он этот уровень. Скорости и дистанции. Okay, when we descend. When we descend by the hierarchy, the next very level we are going to talk about would be the level of velocity or the level of distances. Okay, here we are talking about all the varieties of all distances and here we face such notion as the velocity or the speed, you know. In your life you may face several speeds, we were already talking about four of them, right? So, here we have such level. Okay. И с этим уровнем справляется наука выполнения задач НВЗ. And as for the branch of science that studies this level and helps us to know how to operate with all distances and velocities that we face in our life, the name of this science is the science of task implementation. We have already started with this branch of Slavic Applied Sciences. Remember that, right? So this is the science of task implementation that teaches us how to operate, control and manage with velocities and distances throughout human's life. Столько наук, которые формируют ваше мировоззрение, делая вас неспособным ни к чему, как бы, 
делая из вас, так сказать, проигравших постоянно. Кстати, есть математика, биология, там, механика, кибернетика, куча наук. И попробуйте найти в номенклаторе наук науку о выполнении задач. То есть о реализации достижения результата. Такой науки на планете Земля в этот раз, вот за вот эти века, которые нам известны, там, 10 тысяч лет, там, тысяча лет, там, 2000 лет, ее не существовало. Вот вопрос, почему? Что эта тема неинтересная, ну, то есть, как бы, она не требует изучения, не требует исследования. So, there is one more interesting fact to be speculated over and just to be discussed between us. Just pay your attention towards the name of this science. The science of task implementation. That is the science which teaches you and on the basis of which every person is getting capable of result receiving, right? Now, let's switch to our daily life to all of our contemporary situations. Actually, try to find in orthodox science branches any science that is to teach you how to implement the task and how to solve the problems. Now, on the other hand, you may face just plenty of some kind of foolish sciences and sciences which bring no result for you, like biology, like mathematics, like chemistry and so on so forth. There are so many of them. Just take a list of them. Just take such experiment. Make it checked by yourself on your own. Take a list of all sciences that exist in the world and that have existed throughout quite a long period of time. I mean maybe 1000 years old and try to find that very science which teaches you how to become capable of task implementation. You won't be able to find any of that. That's what I claim. And of course, this could be proven to you. You can check that on your own. And you can make a certain conclusion about that state of things. For example, such as there is no science that helps you to become stronger, to become cleverer, and to become capable of receiving any decent result. Because on the other hand, all those sciences that exist right now, all biologies, cosmologies, and so on and so forth, they just make you incapable of any task implementation because they make you stick to lots of delusions, information, and persuasions you do not actually need in real life. And that's the point, a very important point. Как что-либо сделать, но получить то, что хочется. И когда это произойдет? So actually, as for all people, as for what these people are really anxious about, are two questions. The question are, the questions are, how am I to do something? What is the way? What is the method to do something? To create something? And when am I able to receive that? So when and how? Two questions that have no answers in our contemporary life. И ни одна наука на эти вопросы не отвечает. And of course, as a matter of fact, and you can check that on your own as well, there is no orthodox scientific branch that may give you the answer how to do something and when to get. И и все остаются в неведении до конца своих дней. And the sad, the sad idea about all that stuff that actually throughout all human's life, throughout all person's life, this or that person stays just out of knowledge, out of that very excess, and he's not aware of how to do something and when getting that. And all his life, just from since very early childhood, till the very end of death is just put in such merits. Да. Поэтому, вот видите, надо задуматься над тем, что вы вообще изучаете. Надо ли оно вообще вам? Потому что ничто, ни одна вещь, которую вы изучаете, не дает ответы на эти вопросы. 
а это те вопросы, которые у вас, в общем-то, больше всего волнуют, и все остальные прилагательные эти вопросы. So before starting to study anything in your life, just try to come to an answer whether this something is applicable or not. Whether this new branch of studies will help you to find the answers for those two questions, I mean when and how. And in case in case they do not produce you of such answers, just come up to the conclusion whether you need to study that very branch or you need not. And that's the case. And right now, Mr. Maisov has an intention to give you a very important lesson in your life. Скажите мне сейчас, скажите, что вас эти два вопроса не интересуют. Just try to pretend and tell him that you are not interested in answering those two questions. I mean, how and when. И если вы так говорите, перестаньте себя обманывать. But still, if you're going on telling yourself you're not interested in those two answers according to those two questions, Please just stop lying to yourself, because that's not true. Everybody, any person, is interested in those questions. He searches for them throughout all his life. С этого начинается правильное освоение славянской методики. То есть перестаньте врать себе. As for the stopping lying for yourself, this is that very starting point of the Slavic applied science methodology work, from which you really start to grow. Having not stopped to lie yourself, you are not going to change. You know. Actually, it's a good skill, it's very rare, but very good skill to stop lying to yourself. Yeah. И от, защищайтесь этим щитом от лжи и заблуждений. And in order to get success in such matter, I mean in stopping lying to yourself, you're going to use, because actually you need, it's a great necessity for you, you're going to use that very instrument we were already talking about. I mean the shield, the working pr uh, procedure number one, like the shield. Please, when you deal with any sort or sort of new information, just take that shield. I mean, those four criteria, that instrument, apply it towards the situation or the information you're dealing with. Make the conclusion, and after that, you will have all opportunities covered for stopping lying to yourself. And that's a good practice, that's a decent practice, and the shield is really going to protect you. You will see, just check it on your own. Следующий уровень это уровень науки славянской КВУ и уровень точек опор. То есть опорная точка. Okay. And right now let's switch to our natural hierarchy absolute rule. Here on this very level, we deal with pivots. You know what pivot means, right? If you do not know, switch to your vocabulary. Because as for the branch of the Slavic applied science that studies pivots, this is a very special branch of science that tells us how everything works. You see, it's quite easy notion for understanding. There is a special branch in Slavic applied science that is telling you how everything works. All machineries, all settings, all structures and systems. Дальше мир не строится. Здесь миропостроение закончено. На уровне КВУ миропостроение закончено. Дальше он продолжает вниз существовать в разных состояниях. Есть, есть разные состояния мира. And by this very level, I mean the level of pivot, 
the building of the road is being stopped. So from here we start to build the road, actually the road is being building from this very point. Then it descends, it's, built, it's being built here, here, here and here. And as for the pivot, it stops. No building. After that, as for this diapason, we should say that here the world continues its own existence. We are talking about what exists in this world. И вот дальше вот состояние, в которых состоит, ну, продолжает существовать мир вниз, вплоть до материи, да, вплоть до материи. Это точная копия, точная копия проявлений системы автоматизмов человека как кибернетической как бы системы. When we're talking about the continuation of existence of this very world, when we're talking about at certain levels, it consists of actually, apart from that, we're also talking about the certain levels that all together built the automatic cybernetic human body system. Because this very system is another way, just like another corner or another point of view, from which you may see how this machinery works, because it is built on the same principles. It's like reappearance of this rule in the machinery of cybernetic automatic human body system. Вот здесь вот первое, первый уровень, ну, который вниз идет, это уровень, когда мир продолжает существовать в виде желания. So when we are talking about the first level, we are talking about the level in which the whole world continues its existence in the case of wishes. So, when we are dealing with the wish, you should know that by this criteria, and according to this criteria, the whole world continues its existence. Желание у вас возникает тогда, когда у вас нет варианта получить то, что вы хотите. When we are talking about the wish, we mean that any person faces wish in his life when he has no alternative and when he has no variant of how to get something in his life. If he doesn't know how to get something, he has the wish of getting that. То есть, э, и потом он переходит в стадию существования номер два. Интерес – это когда вы надеетесь, что э, если подождать, то вариант может как бы появиться. Да? Let's switch to the second level, according to which, to which the world continues its existence. We are talking about the level of interest. Why are we talking about it? Because here, according to this level, all people are waiting for something. They are waiting for that very, they are interested in something, they are interested in achieving something, but they do not have the variant of how to achieve that very something. But still, they have the hope that they could achieve that somehow, and they are waiting for that variant that may fall down from somewhere on their heads. Действия какого-либо объекта для подражания, то есть поиск объекта подражания и копирование подражания этому объекту, то есть копирование. So, in case we do not have any variance of achieving something we wish, in case we are tired of looking for those variants, or those variants do not somehow fall down on us, right? Then the person switches to the third level. This third level 
shows us that here a person tries to find someone who could be copied. We are talking about certain action and copying. Like, in case you do not have the variant of how to solve the problem, in case you have the hope this variant could be found but still it's not found, then you come to the third level. You become, you start the action, you search for the person who you think have the variant of how to solve that situation. You just copy all dynamical motion chains, you just copy all his actions and you are acting his point of view of how this task should be implemented and problem should get solved. So this is the level of action and copy of another person. То есть, э, и вот эта копия, ну, которую вы хотите скопировать, объекта для подражания, его действия, поступки, вы хотите скопировать, которые, она никогда не подходит для того, чтобы решить, ну, получить результат. И поэтому, когда вы совершаете вот это дурацкое действие, да, то есть как бы ищите объект для подражания и подражаете ему, вы всегда получаете что? Контрусилия. В обратном. Сила действия в физике да, равна силе противодействия многократной. И поэтому вот этот уровень называется как бы, контрусилия, то есть обратка срабатывает. Да? And as a matter of fact, when you start searching for people, who you are able to copy about. And when you start acting like all those people, when you start trying to imitate their actions, and by imitation of that actions, in your very situation you are trying to solve the problem somehow, you always face the misfortune. Because this very situation differs from all the situations of the rest of the people who you are trying to copy and imitate. That's why after you create and make some actions towards the situation you are in, you receive the counter-reverse action from all that situation. Like everything is just, I don't know how to explain that, but everything is just trying to push you back. In physics there is such a rule that <laughs> One stupid, ungrounded, unconscious action revolves reaction that is ten times stronger and more powerful. As actually it's the second Newton law. That's what I'm talking about right now. Giving you different examples and putting you in different situations. That's it. So this is the level of counter reaction when the whole situation all your surroundings creates the counter reaction against you not you as a person but against your actions that were already copied from all the people against all your imitations okay. yeah. Когда у вас уже вот эта штука ну, наколотила по голове, наколотила по голове, много-много, много контрусилий. Мы приходим в стадию согласия. Согласия, я согласен. Только не бейте меня, пожалуйста. Не, не надо со мной больше ничего делать. Я совсем вообще вокруг согласен. И вот эта стадия поражения, вот эта стадия поражения и стадия согласия. Да, вот мир существует и стадии согласия. То есть, когда вам сказали ну-ну-ну. Так нельзя ну, как бы делать. Вы не поняли, вам, вас ну, хорошенько отоварили, ну, дали вам по башке хорошенько. Раз, два, до тех пор, пока вы не перестали это делать, и вот тогда, когда вы стали согласны, mm -hmm. э, э, вот это и есть та стадия, как бы мир существует и в стадии согласия. Окей, okay, let's switch to another level. And the best explanation, the best situation that will make it clear for you is the level of consent. So, how do we come and fall down into consent? Just imagine, you wanted to achieve something, but you do not have any variant. You were looking for that variant and you were just waiting for it. 
you receive no warrant. You found a person who you copied. And then you acted like that very person. But your actions were wrong and you received the total counter-reaction from the whole situation. And actually, as for that counter-reaction, it's quite strong on the one hand and it beats you every day by its misfortunes. That's what counter-reaction brings you. And you are getting beaten and beaten and beaten once more and once more again by the whole world that still exists, even if you do not have any alternatives, you know. Until that very level, when you come coming up to a consent, it's just like a stature of a person, such a feeling, when, you, when you're telling yourself and all the people who surround you that, okay, you're ready, you're completely sharing everybody's point, you have come into consent with the whole world and you are doing that just to stop the whole world beating you with the misfortunes. So this is how a person falls into consent just in order to prevent one more beating against him, to prevent more strikes, to prevent more attacks that may approach him and put him down. That's it. Okay. Uh, uh... И дальше вам нужно как-то освободиться от этого всего. Ну, то есть, как бы, от того, что вас, ну, забыть, что, побыстрее забыть, что вас побили, замучили до смерти, да, и так далее, и тому подобное. И тогда вы притворяетесь, тогда вы вынуждены притвориться, для того, чтобы от этого освободиться. И вот здесь возникает уровень, когда вы подменяете одно, как бы, на другое. То есть, вы притворяетесь и подменяете одно, как бы на другое. То есть вы занимаетесь подменой понятий для того, чтобы освободиться от вот этого согласия. Понятно, да? То есть вы как бы уйти от давления силы хотите и, знаете, вот это приблизительно так похоже. То есть в Америке, знаете, есть такое, ну, вот, да, окей, да, 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 а я вот как бы буду считать, что это вот это, но буду говорить вот так, показывая, да, то есть, то есть мне, я ему вроде как послал его далеко, да, там, показал ему, о, вот так, да, а я себе сказал, да, то есть, а я ему сказал, я, я себе сказал, раз если я покажу вот так, мне дадут, ну, в дыню, мне дадут в дыню, то я буду считать, что я показываю вот так, а показывать буду вот так. Да, понятно, да? Да. So, quite vivid explanation would be given for as for the next level, as for the next levels, okay? So, moving on, descending down. Just imagine such situation here, you show uh, your absolute consent with the whole world superiority. And you're so tired, you do not have power, you're not powered enough, you're actually feeling miserable. And of course you need something that may help you to feel free from all that misery you're already stuck in. So, how do you obliged to do, to act in such a situation. How are the people, actually the majority of people, dealing with this situation? Actually, here we're talking about the exchange of notions. Exchange of notions is the first, the second level coming up to the consent. So, by the exchange of notions, we mean that we take one notion, for example, some kind of bad notion, and we are trying to pretend it's not so bad, just to make all the people who surround you, you think it's not so bad, even though your own idea is it's just so bad that you want to split it up completely. <laughs> but in, in America, there is... Such an example, like, you know, uh, some people, mm, they uh, try to look uh, very pleasant, they're smiling, even though they're not confident and they do not want to feel any consent about what you're talking about. And they're just behaving like this. They show you a good thumb, yeah, they're pleasant, they're with you, you're a team, everything's okay. They completely share your, share your point, but it's not like that. It's actually, actually, they think that 
I just want to fuck you up. I just want you to go far, far away. And actually, please shut up. Just take your ass and get out of here. That's what they really think. This is some kind of American real. I guess it's the best. I guess that's the best explanation that should be given to you. In order to let you know what exchange of notions really is. And actually, the best idea about all of that, that all people, all people around you are doing that. They are pleasant, they are smiling, they are dealing with you, but they have their own opinion and usually just in 90 occasions out of 100 that one just to make you out of their life and they tend to think you are just a completely idiots and sucks and so on and so forth. И состояние автоматизма это когда человек находится без сознания. Ну то есть как бы он полностью автоматически не отдает себе отчет в том, что он не вменяем. То есть в этот в этот в этот в этот момент времени это состояние невменяемости. То есть он ну вот как дурак он низкий. Фул, да, то есть вам это не нужно пока. Вот состояние дурака по-русски не соответствует состоянию дурака по-английски. Да, то есть, и вот это надо объяснить. То есть он не отдает себе отчета в том, что он совершает. Вот. Именно не меняем. System here is the total automatic, just like a robot, you know. All automatics are here, and when we are talking about the person who is stuck to this automatic level, we mean that actually there is such state of things when he is not conscious of what he is doing. He gives and brings no consciousness towards. The situation he deals with, towards his thoughts, his actions, his ideas, he's just doing them automatically, and this is the way in which his body continues its existence and it, his own actions. It's not just like the person; it's just that part of the person that still is operating, and it's done unconsciously, completely. Like you know, in Russian there is such a thing like. Being a fool and playing a fool, but playing a fool in Russian and playing a fool in English, these are completely two different fools, you know, because even being a fool could be, be a very consciousness choice, right? But here we mean that all we deal with, it's like a part of flesh in the shape of body that looks like a human and pretends to be a human by his behavior, but actually. И вот очень интересный момент, чтобы для того, чтобы вот с этим всем справляться, вот с этим всем справляться, нужны три науки еще. So one more, one more significant thing to be told of is that in order to know how to operate all this diapason, all these levels, how to put them under control, чтобы это было все управляемо. To make it Uh, manageable to make it controllable and to put it under control. I will be emphatic as for those notions. You need three more branches of science. Three more branches of science. Three. Mm -hmm. So the next science is the Brunengo mechanics. Мы ее будем изучать в курсе экономической разведки. We are going to learn this part of science in a specified course of economical re revenge, reverse, okay? Yeah. Так возьми, посмотри, паузу поставь. На паузу, просто нажми на, 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 на запись. 